Hey everybody, Tab here with Real Michigan Anglers. And I've recently had a lot of requests for people asking me to explain my rigs for steelhead float fishing. So I'm going to go over at least a little bit about everything from the line all the way down to the hook and everything in between, uh, as well as some basics in float fishing and a few tips and tricks. And then also the second half of the video will be me in action actually uh, catching fish on these rigs and then showing the rig that I caught the fish on so that you can see what types of situations I'm using, what types of rigs and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to do my best to cover a lot of stuff and show you the things that are working for me. Um, but keep in mind this is coming from the standpoint of a reasonably new steelhead fisherman and I'm still learning lots about float fishing. So I'm going to give you the knowledge that I have fish, and hope fish. that that helps you get a better understanding or maybe think about a couple new things you haven't used before, that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you a variety of different rigs that I use and uh, how to rig a couple of those up. So let's start by talking about fishing line. Okay, So for float fishing it's generally accepted that monofilament is the best main line. So um, I use a variety of different types of monofilament line for float fishing with bobbers. There are a couple advantages to monofilament line. One, it floats, so keeping it from getting sucked into the current and messing up your drift is very helpful. Uh, that's where fluorocarbon doesn't work well as a main line. It tends to get sucked into the water and pulled down because it sinks more. Um, so a floating line is great. Um, the other really nice aspect about monofilament line is it's stretchy. And a lot of steelhead fishermen actually prefer to use high stretch monofilament lines uh, because it takes a lot of the shock absorption when the fish really takes off. So the line absorbs the first bit of shock, then the rod absorbs the next bit of shock, and then the drag on your reel absorbs any leftover shock. So if it really takes off, it's going to affect all three of those things. So anything you can do to uh, keep these fish from snapping your line or uh, escaping from you is good. So monofilament is generally the best float fishing line. So when float fishing with a center pin, I typically like to go with a little bit heavier line than I would with uh, a bait caster or a spinning reel. So for this particular reel, I have this Tecton Super Monofilament. It's a 29 pound, 29.3 pound uh, monofilament, high stretch, but it's actually the diameter of typical 17 pound. So for all arguments, let's call it 17 pound mainline monofilament. Um, my other center pin reel is set up with a uh, P-line, 15 pound, uh, currently this version of the P-Line, the C21. Uh, first time I used C21 was on a guided trip uh, with our friend Joseph from West Michigan Guide Service and I noticed right away how smooth and castable the line was so I asked him what it was and uh, ironically it was the stuff that I had just bought on clearance so I had it in 12 and 15 pound already so I put that 15 pound right on my uh, other center pin reel right away and um, I believe that's what I also have on my uh, spinning setup right now also. Um, it might be the P-Line Fluoro Clear, which is the other one that I use. So with the spinning reel, I like to use 12 pound because um, you can get more line on the spool that way. And uh, the bigger line is just more cumbersome than float fishing, I think. Uh, also, I like the added advantage of a lighter main line if you're not running a bumper from your bobber to your bait. So once you have your main line on, you're going to attach a float and uh, use a couple of examples, some 15 gra gram floats here from Raven 
and from Fishing Freaks. Um, with this type of float we have these plastic little tubing bits and basically you just put these on the line and then sandwich the float in there. The advantage there is that if you want to change floats all you have to do is pop those off and stick a different float on. So if you need to change size or even just colors because you can't see um, you can do that. So I get the these Fish and Freaks in pink because I really like the pink top. I think that's easier to see on uh, most occasions. Uh, the orange is pretty good as well. Um, sometimes I'll even put a like a chartreuse uh, piece of that tubing on there or something to highlight that to make them easier to see. Uh, and a lot of times I use a 15 gram just because it's easier to see and it's easier to cast because it takes more weight to use a 15 gram float than it would a uh, lighter float. Uh, the other option is a slip bobber and we're going to talk about the differences between those as well. So let's do that. Uh, but I'm actually going to give you a demonstration on how to set up this slip bobber. Alright, so when you're uh, setting up a slip bobber rig, the first thing you need to do is put a bobber stop on before you put the bobber on. These are the rubber bobber stops. You can also do the kind that are like a string wrap that cinches down. I think those might go through the eyelets better. Um, but I typically use this kind. And that works pretty well. So that is on there. I didn't really show how I did that very well. But once it's on there, I'm just going to slide it up a little bit. And then feed the bobber through. And the bobber's on, sitting on the bobber stop. Now I'm going to tie on a swivel. So let's talk swivels. I've used all sorts of different types of swivels, and sometimes I even bypass the swivel altogether, which I generally don't recommend. But I like to use these little itty bitty guys. These are blood run uh, micro swivels. I forget the size, um, or I'll use something like this. This is a size 14 barrel swivel. These were super cheap the other day at the store, so I grabbed some because it's something I tend to run out of. Um, you want to avoid the bigger ones because you want your presentation to be subtle as it can be, uh, especially if you're doing a rig like this that's kind of not really all that subtle in the first place. So instead of using this tiny one, though, I'm actually going to use the bigger size because I'm going to set this rig up with an egg sinker. All right, so before I attach my swivel, I've got to put my egg sinker and some beads on the line. So at least you should use one bead. Two beads is slightly preferable because the first bead can prevent so I can't talk and do that at the same time. The first bead prevents the end of your slip bobber from being smashed by this big heavy egg sinker that we're putting on here. Uh, this is a half ounce egg sinker. So ideally what you want to do, and you can do this um, right after you tie your swivel on, check that weight, and your goal is to have the water line around that white line there when the weight is pulling down on it. So if you set that up and everything's wrong, then you're going to want to put a different size egg sinker on there. If it's just not enough weight, then you can add a split shot, which I'd like to add one below the bobber anyway to keep the bobber from getting squirrely. So I've got a bead, my egg, and then I'm going to put another bead on here. I'm using these bright beads, which is not ideal either, because subtlety of presentation is well, reasonably important at all times. Now I've got my barrel swivel here. I'll put that on with a polymer knot. Alright, so you can use any uh, knot that you want to to uh, attach the swivel. I have faith in the polymer knot myself, so that's what I use. So now that I've got my bobber stop, my bead, my egg weight, my other bead to protect the knot, and my barrel swivel, I can tie on my leader lines. 
So this is where we're going to attach the hook. Uh, I generally like to use 8 pound. Uh, sometimes I'll go to 6, but I usually end up losing the fish and breaking the line with 6. Um, so 8's a safety net. I feel like I can still kind of horse a fish with 8 if I need to. So uh, I'm going to go somewhere about an arm's length to my beard, uh, approximately. Cut my leader line. And at this point, you either attach the line to the swivel, or you can attach the hook first, which is what I'm going to do in this case, because I like to do an egg loop knot. So I like to do an egg loop knot because it makes the hook line up really nicely to where it's not cockeyed like it would be with something like a polymer knot. So, I'm going to do my egg loop knot. The other advantage to doing the egg loop knot is I can throw a chunk of skein in there if I want to, or uh, sometimes I'll even stick a wax worm in the egg loop so it's right there on the hook shank. That tends to work pretty well. So in lieu of this, you can use any knot that you want. And if you don't do a knot that requires tying the hook first, then you can go ahead and attach the line before attaching the hook. But in this case, I got my egg loop. And as you can see, that hook is dangling right, right where I want it to. So now, if I'm fishing a spawn bag, I can go ahead and tie that right on. If I'm fishing a bead, I'm going to need to uh, put that on first. So, I'm going to show you how I put a bead on. So, to put the bead on, you need a bead and a bead bag. I'm going to slide the line through the hole in the bead. And let it go down to where the hook is. And I actually generally start by putting it, you know, about that far away from the hook. And then I take my bead bag, stick it in the hole, bead it through, and pull it till it feels at least reasonably tight. If you go super tight, uh, it can fray your line over time when it slides, but if you go too loose it slides around all the time, that's annoying too, so I like to go pretty tight. Then trim off both ends of that bead bag. This second end will be reusable again, so save that one and discard the other. Okay, so now I have a leader line with a hook and a bead. I can move this bead around. I kind of like about that much distance. A lot of people tend to run a bit closer like that, but you can adjust that as needed. So then I am going to tie this end on with a polymer knot. Make a loop, put the loop through the loop, open up that loop, and then put the whole leader, bead, and hook through that loop. And then cinch it back down. This is where you want to be the most careful about burning up your line. Getting it a little wet is good. Bada bing, bada boom. So now I have my whole rig from the hook to the bead, the rest of the leader line, my egg sinker, and my slip bobber. But as you need to add depth, you just move your slip bobber or your slip stop up and set it to the depth that you want, like so. So I like this type of rig because my weight is totally concentrated right before the leader, which means that this bait is getting down to the bottom where I need it to be. So another alternative to this rig that's a little less cumbersome uh, to rig up is to replace the egg and the beads with a shot like this. So it's a similar shaped oval piece of lead 
that has a barrel swivel built in on top and bottom to reduce your line twist and uh, it's just less components it's all built into one the other nice thing about these uh, these particular ones are labeled in grams so that's eight grams and this is five grams so if I was using an eight gram float I could just use this or I could use the five and then add like one or two more split shots to get me right to the weight that I need and usually that's what I aim for is I aim for a weight that's just shy of what I need so that I can add one or two more split shots and usually I add those closer to the bobber sometimes on the leader though I got these ones on Amazon from Thickfish they are pretty cheap so in lieu of a rig like that you can use nothing but good old split shot but not regular split shot that have the wings that you can pinch them open and shut you want round split shot which is a little more cumbersome if you're trying to take them off and reuse them but this is going to keep your rig more streamlined so that it floats properly in the water so these guys here are the size 6 from bullet weights uh, that's generally the size I like to use um, but I also keep a couple other sizes that are smaller as well as a range of micro shots for certain situations this raven setup is really good if you're going to do a tapered float pattern So here's a good example of the rig that I use the most typically, although I do like that bulk shot rig where you're using the heavy egg shot because it gets everything right down where you need it. I also often will just use a series of split shot. This is how I had it rigged up last time I was using it. And what I like to do here is I like to put a bigger split shot up towards the top and then a few smaller split shot that I space out on the line and then two bigger ones right at the swivel okay and then from there I have my bait in this case a little bead and I have a spawn bag on there so with this type of shot pattern having more weight at the bottom but enough weight at the top to keep the bobber setting the way you want to and then as many as you need in between spaced out I can slide these up and down and around and I can just crimp them back down tight once I have them in the location that I want and then when I'm done I can just slide them all down to my swivel which sometimes is what I end up doing anyway I'll do that and maybe put one or two up at the top so really heavy fast current like the Grand River a lot of spots uh, I'll do that. Uh, slower current, and I'll, I'll space them out more um, because it's not as hard to keep your bait down in slower current. So I'm always just kind of adjusting and tweaking until I seem to find the right thing. So let's talk about how to adjust and tweak and what to look for and those kinds of things. Okay, so this is our water. The flow is going this direction and we've got a bobber generally speaking you want your bobber to be like that or leaning slightly back not that much slightly diagonally like so so what you want to avoid is this where you're being dragged and it's causing your bobber to point in the direction of the current if you're weighted properly and not dragging, your bobber should sit reasonably up. And sometimes I will intentionally slow it down with my drag so that it's leaning back the opposite direction of the current. And that ensures that your line goes down to your weight and then your leader is off with your hook at the end. Which is basically the same idea here. always our goal 
Okay, so that's really the basics of photo fishing. You want your your bobber to set, you know, like this, or just cocked with the, the bottom end pointing the direction the current's going ever so slightly. If you can achieve that, then you're basically doing most of what you need to do. And the rest, to me, is nuances of kind of watching your rig and noticing, you know, if you're hitting bottom a lot, you want to move your bobber down and keep your weight off the bottom and hopefully keep your presentation coming before the fish so your fish hear your presentation coming at it and then all the rest of your rig coming in from behind. So that's really mechanically the basics of it. Um, where the tapered shot pattern comes into play, the current is the fastest at the top of the water. So here we've got fast current going all crazy in that direction. And here we've got a little bit slower current on the bottom. So by starting with bigger split shot, going down the line, and then getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to your swivel, and then your leader, and hook. So that really ensures, especially in slow water, that your bait is getting out in front of your rig which is what you want it to do. So that's why the tapered shot pattern is common. I personally don't like the tapered shot pattern. I think it's a pain uh, to get all the different split shot and the micro split shot are really hard to get on the line and that sort of thing. So that's why I've kind of adapted this sort of a setup where between my swivel and my bobber I can adjust these however I need them to. I can take one off, I can put one more on, uh, that kind of thing. So this is more adjustable if you're changing locations and that kind of thing. Uh, or just for getting the bite dialed in. Say you're sitting on fish and you know you're sitting on fish and you're not getting them to bite. That's when I start moving my bobber up and down and changing my depth and bulking my shot differently, maybe putting another one on the bottom so that I know it's really getting down there, um, that kind of thing. And that stuff you kind of just have to do and experience in order to know when to do it and why to do it. Another advantage to this type of rig is if I want to switch bobbers, I can pop this one off those tubes and Say I want to switch to a lighter bobber, now I can just stick this guy on here. And then probably if I take one of these split shot off, that's perfect because I just went from an 11 gram. Sorry, I just went from a 15 gram to an 11 gram. So now this would probably be too much weight, unless I was already a little underweighted before. The easiest way to, to know how deep to set your bobber is you want the water line to go to the white line whether you're using a raven or a fish freak or just about any other bobber, that's where that water line should be sitting. So my favorite hook that I've found to use so far is this Blood Run Skeena hook, size 1. Um, nice thing about this hook is it is um, very heavy duty, so this is good enough for king salmon, you know, this isn't going to straighten out easily, which is a good thing if you're fighting big steelhead also. Um, and also they have a larger eyelet which makes it easier to do the egg loop knot, especially with heavier line, which is important for the king salmon fishing in particular. Um, but it's also big enough to where if a steelhead bites this tasty uh, butter bead from loop beads and the line slides all the way down, that hook is going to stick out just enough, even with this uh, 12 uh, or bigger 14, 15 millimeter beads, uh, I still am getting good hookups with this particular hook, and it's within the legal size limits for all of the, uh, or at least most of the um, rivers in Michigan. So that, I like my blue beads. Uh, aside from the P-Line Tactical, um, I also occasionally use the Maxima Green or the regular P-Line Fluorocarbon and uh, sometimes I use the Cigar Red Label. Uh, the Red Label does tend to 
twist up a little bit more on me. So I don't like to use that if I'm using a double bead rig and uh, prefer a little bit stiffer fluorocarbon line for that. Um, but really anything will work that's fluorocarbon. I prefer 8 pound because it's generally strong enough to bite the fish. But if you're using a really stiff rod or a short rod, um, you know, you can still break that 8 pound. So you might want to go with 10 pound for steelhead. Um, but the lighter the line, the better as far as your hookup ratios. So um, if you really want to hook up like crazy, 6 is the way to go. But you want to make sure you have a nice long noodly rod and that stretchy monofilament line to help combat that fish and not put strain on that six pound line so that it breaks. So eight pound leaders seem pretty safe to me. Um, I don't have a lot of problems with it breaking off. More often it will pop the hook before the line will break. Um, I have hooked into a few decent steelhead on six pound and the line has broke every time. That was all before I had my nice 13 foot super moderate uh, center pin rod so I think now I can probably get away with the six pound more and I might start doing that more here in the future as well as experimenting with other variations on these techniques but the bottom line is you gotta get that bait down towards the bottom with some sort of split shot and then have your uh, leader trailing out in the current ahead of all of that so that they see the bait before they see the presentation or the rest of the rig and that should get you there a couple of other tips that I forgot to mention uh, dealing particularly with the rod is that you want a long rod pretty much as long as you can handle using in whatever given situation for float fishing so this allows you to keep your rod easily up high which keeps your line off the water as much as possible which keeps your bobber moving at a straight path um, your bobber will just ride those current seams and go where it's intended to go. It tends to follow the heavier current and funnel into these spots where the fish are. So you want to let that work to your advantage as opposed to letting the line drag in the water and cause your bait to swing in towards the bank, which gets it generally more out of the strike zone. So the longer your rod, the easier it is to mend the line. And when it comes to fighting fish, definitely a more moderate rod is going to give you a much bigger safety net and make it so that you're less likely to fight fish. So um, I've been particularly impressed with this uh, Nova Tackle Midnight Series. This one is a 13 foot, 6 to 10 pound rod. It's very moderate, moderate fast action. Um, really bends over when you set the hook and um, has a lot of stiffness in the second half so it's got enough backbone to where you can horse them out of the current but the whole second half of the rod is so flexible that it absorbs all that shock and makes it really easy to keep that fish hooked uh, and not pop the hook or break the line when they start running unexpectedly so get yourself a nice long noodly rod the uh, longest noodliest rod you can find. Um, I know a lot of guys will use like a crappie rod or something like that. Um, I would say at least an 8.6. I've had a good amount of luck with my 8.6 Gander Mountain rod that I got years ago for $40. Um, and the nice thing with that one was it was extremely moderate so I didn't run into a lot of problems with losing fish uh, with that particular one. I've had other longer ones that were nice to work with but were too stiff uh, so I've definitely lost fish from having a float rod that's too stiff because you really need a lot of shock absorption to fight a big steelhead in heavy current so long noodly rods definitely are gonna up your chances um, avoid stiff rods and shorter rods so I would say like eight foot six inches about as short as I would go for float fishing. Uh, I tend to use my eight six in creeks in areas with heavy brush cover and tree branches and whatnot so I can still get a hook set without putting it in the trees. That can be a little harder to do with the 13 foot rod sometimes. Um, 
but having a good moderate rod, uh, a fast tip, and some backbone should get the job done for you. And for float fishing, I think the most ideal thing is definitely a center pin reel. Um, the close second would be the bait caster, and you can also float fish with a spinning setup, which I also do. Um, but it's my least favorite out of the three. You don't get as smooth of drifts, you get less control, and it requires two hands on the reel at all times. So I'm a big fan of getting that smooth drift that you can get with a bait caster or a center pin setup. Hopefully this is all helpful uh, for you to understand some of the variations on rigs and how I do things here on different Michigan rivers. Um, this next part shows me on a few different rivers and some different rigs that I'm using and hopefully that will help give you a better idea of what kind of rigs I'm using in different types of current conditions and depths and that sort of thing. Also, like I said before, I'm reasonably new to float fishing for steelhead, so if you have any tips for me by looking at my rig, um, unless it's to tell me that tapered shot patterns are the only way to go, feel free to drop that in the comments. I always appreciate advice, and uh, hopefully you guys go out there and apply some of these things and catch some more steelhead. Thanks for watching, and enjoy this next section. That's a nice, pretty hen going back in. Yeah. All right, so I just caught that on this bloop bead. It's a 15 millimeter. It's got about a foot and a half liter. And then I've got two split shot right above my swivel. Huh? Uh, it was a bloop, but it was one of the ones he sent me. It's a custom one. Yeah. The, f the size 15 or whatever that he sent me. Is it on your pole? Yeah. All right, so above the swivel, I got those two split shot. Another one a few inches above that. Another six inches or so above that. I have another. One more above that. One more right below the bobber and a raven 15 gram float so my total distance here is about six feet to the bead here's my steelhead beautiful cromer with a pink stripe put up a good fight almost lost it in the log jam there she is beautiful fish Give her the send off. I think she's ready. Yep, yeah, she was ready. Yep, yep. Awesome. Nice fish. High five. Thank you. That's a slimy high five. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is the rig that I just caught that on. I got a big juicy spawn bag. A, uh, Pink UV Mr. Dirk's glass bead. Just a small one. I think the smallest size. Six. Size six? Yep. And then uh, just a cheap styrofoam float. Uh, so I've got a barrel swivel and then a egg sinker. And it's cheap float and a bobber stopper to keep it from going too deep. That was the rig that I just caught that steelhead with. So today is the first time I've ever used a double bead rig. I'm just going to show you that real quick. I've got my float, my bigger split shot that sits on a barrel swivel. And then from there, I got a foot and a half liter of this peach bead. To a hook and then tied directly to that hook an orange bead with an orange spawn bag oh yeah she's ready to go see you later girl so 
So I just caught that steelhead on one of the Nick Godwin jigs with a big fat pink spawn bag on it. And from there, I've got about a foot or two to a swivel. And then I've got a couple split shot. Two so far, there's number three, number four, number five, number six. Now number seven is bigger. And if we keep going, number eight and number nine and ten right below my bobber. Those are the biggest ones, smallest ones on bottom, biggest ones on top. And then uh, this is one of the Nick Godwin steel float, steelhead floats. Um, I'm about eight feet depth total using a nine foot six inch Fenwick Eagle and my Pusino reel with the drag set super light because this rod's a little bit on the stiff side. 